gentlemen, we are going to the moon. Hello, everyone. In uh, today's video, I thought I'd share a project that I've been working on for a long time. And that is an attempt to make a Saturn V with all the bits and bobs that are included in the real one. Now, I appreciate the fact that we've got a bit of an AOA problem here, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Let's go ahead and climb inside. And uh, this is our command module. And uh, like I said, uh, the whole purpose of this video is to kind of show you what I've been up to, sort of show you some of the traps that I've learned and problems that I've gotten as I've run through. Uh, one thing I do want to say right now is none of my hands are on any of the controls. Um, I actually you're not touching anything. I mean, it looks like, oh, you know, you're using your joystick, but uh, believe it or not, I don't need to. Uh, this thing is completely automated as far as climb goes. And uh, all the different controls and things like that you see are all in smooth. So let's talk about this project a little bit. So first of all, you'll observe that it is ugly. I have no doubt of that. I'm not an aesthetics guy. The most aesthetic thing in this whole project is the fact I kind of got the uh, black and white lines there so that you can do it. You can also see that my interstage section kind of sitting there in the middle, uh, there's no cup on it. You can't see me with my hand, but I'm making a C shape with my hand and trying to cover that spot right now. And of course, a little cone up here for the S4B and everything like that. Look at how, look at how tiny the service module is compared to this. But uh, the big thing we were trying to do with this is we were trying to prove a concept that we could do an entire Saturn V plus the Apollo guidance computer, which honestly, this is in my favorite part of the whole project. But as we started working on the project, everything started to expand and it got complicated. And I'll go ahead and flip on the light there. I think that's actually a little bright. Like I can just reach up and unscrew the light bulb a little bit there. Yeah, we can go down to mood lighting if you want. Eh, I'm gonna leave it alone. But there were so many things that we had to do to make this possible. Uh, one thing you'll notice on my left here is we had to figure out what the deal with air pressure was. We had to create a model for that. We had to figure out how to do the distance formula on G's to get a G. We developed a flight director. Um, I personally tried to model it over like, you know, almost like a Soviet sort of era design. It's like an LED display. I uh, tried to come up with a sequencer and how to like cancel a stage by sending a critical signal I had to figure out. We had to figure out the orbital dynamics in order to pull this off. I love the fact there's a throttle for a rocket motor. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go disconnect myself for a second here. Nothing bad will happen. Don't worry. I'm allowed to do this in this game. And I'm going to float down here and actually take a look at what's going on inside this brain. Let me open the sucker up. I'll get back into my seat here. Fantastic. Now, what I had to do when I was developing this is basically design a I almost had to design a computer from scratch to make this work. And I modeled on the AGC, which is really what this was all about. And uh, all these buttons work and all the programs work and everything like that, I'll show you. But I started writing source code and then I started writing code. Then I started figuring things out. Then I tried to write some more code. Then I quickly realized that this is getting long. So then I got smart and started separating it into separate projects and stuff like that. And I started having things for the different pieces and then doing the gravity turn, you know, trying to get the autopilot working and all those other things and design it. You know, one of the crazy things with this program or this computer, and again, you'll have source code in the comments if you want to play with it. Uh, one of the crazy things is I, I can press reset right now and basically stop it. Or if I were to reboot, it would keep running because it runs its calculations continuously, just like the real one did. Now, as we're climbing here, I've got, I'm taking a look over my fuel. We're at 72. We're doing fine as far as this goes. Uh, nothing crazy going on. Starting to build up the Gs a little bit. We're also starting to stabilize a little bit. I see we're, we're going for a 90 degree heading here. And we're at 89.9, .9, which is fabulous. Um, I don't have an integral term or anything like that. It's actually pretty lame. You can see I've got some gyros. So let's go climbing here. I'm going to go ahead and release myself here. And I'm going to kind of float back. Usually, uh, you don't want to do these things uh, during boost, but uh, it's cool. So one of the things I had to do when I was working on this project is figure out how all the different components would go together. So uh, for example, here, my S4B, I had to come up with a way to do RCS system. I had to figure out a way to basically make it so the motors will start because if you flood them with too much gases, they basically burn out right away. I had to develop a system where you actually compare the local clock with the main clock. If it is, it knows that it's in sync with itself. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And then, of course, we had to develop a way to dock the different ships together. And you can see here that we came up with a dual coupling option here. And um, one of the incredible things is this little dude hanging out. This is actually a lunar lander. <laughs> this is such a fun project to make. But um, we actually have a lunar lander. It has the top half with the ascent stage. You can see the landing legs there. And it has a bottom half with the descent. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the uh, descent stage. That's the ascent stage. But not only did we do that, but me being me, I'm... Um, I just like computers, so I developed like a data here, so I can actually come over here, for example, as I can do nine and press readout, and it'll actually tell me battery remaining. And you can see this is all working while we're flying here. And I had to come up with a way to like play the lunar lander game, and like my early stability code came in. Going down below this is the S4 stage, and you can see we've got ourselves a huge fuel tank. I did cheat a little bit for that purpose, just to make my life easier. And then of course, as we're designing all these things, and again, we're moving pretty darn quick right now, is I had to come up with ways to like get them to fire off, and I had to get ways 
to gimbal them and I had to get them to, um, <laughs> this is kind of a neat view, get them to be stable in all those different components as I was actually engineering it. Uh, this is the S2 stage here. And again, I'll go through the different stages later. At the moment, I should probably get back up into the top <laughs> and continue flying. You can see we've pitched over quite a bit here. Oh boy, I'm gonna go float through. I actually enjoy flying Lunar Lander. It's a blast. Eh, this must be the uh, service module here. Ah, here we go. Let me get back in the cockpit. Ah, anyway, I was saying. <laughs> so it's just, it's insane. So the engines on the back of this thing, uh, I really hope Pacholi, the developer of Arkean, gives us a bigger motor. Um, one, uh, 1 1.9 mega newtons is nice, but it's not 34 mega newtons. I need a lot more than that. And especially since the real Saturn V rocket, of course, had itself um, five engines going at one time. So trying to get this all to, like I said, come together is just crazy. Now, as you know, in the real world, when you're firing the Saturn like this, you do have the ability to actually, we'd be sequenced right now. We'd actually break off the S1 and switch to the S2 and so on and so forth. But because the fuel economy is so good, if I were to drop the S1 off now um, and the S2 kicks on, which is that second stage, I wouldn't have enough thrust to weight ratio fast enough to make orbit. And uh, you can see right here, there's my orbital velocity. You can also see that my flight director says I'm perfectly centered like that, building in the Gs here. This thing's really, really fun when you get down to like 5% fuel because it basically slams you in your seat. Now, one of the cool things is that we have, I love how many hit the light switches. It takes a second to kick in. Not intentional, it just worked that way. So I'm not complaining at all. But um, you'll notice we don't have an automatic sequencer. We chose not to do that. Uh, you just push the button of the stage you want and you press enter. One of the things we did do is if you remember that data link, when we were early testing this, we had so many problems where like we'd have the wrong radio frequency. And so we actually developed a data link system where it compares the clock on my, basically the command module with the clock on the stage. So you can confirm whether or not you've got a good signal. A little red light comes on. You can see I'm about 50% through my fuel tank here. I'm doing fine. This thing's flat. Our goal, of course, is a 220 clock up and we're at 175 and what do we got for orbital speed here uh, we're at 546 547 we're doing fine and uh, what i'll do is i'll get us a little closer to the end of the orbit there just so that uh, you can enjoy the last part all right let's do a little bit of staging we're pretty much right about to make orbit here so i'm going to go ahead and press the stage button select the new stage watch how satisfying this is Whee! here comes the next stage is that awesome Go ahead and delete the S1 there. Of course, in the real one, as you know, what they would do is they'd actually have little motors that push the thing out of the way. But I just wanted to demonstrate that it does work. And again, I haven't touched the controls yet. And you can see we're pretty much right on prograde. Our heading is basically perfect. The other thing you'll observe here is the fact that I'm S2. It now reads out the fuel. I'm receiving that through the data link. You can see the uh, frequencies all changed. And you can also see my acceleration is so poor. <laughs> the real one, when it burns, of course, um, you know, basically, you have the advantage of being a little bit higher and a little bit faster. So even though you don't have the same thrust to weight ratio. But just to give an idea of the fact that this does indeed work, uh, you can see that lovely red line of victory slowly encompass the planet. Ready, ready, oh my goodness. See those two blue lines right there and there. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh, uh, oh, uh, here we go. Now what I really need to do is circularize and do all that stuff, but that's okay. That's it, we're here. And you can see uh, my big old S2 has uh, done what it needs to do to get me up here. And the funny thing is, I still have the S4. <laughs> like, I'm ready to use that. You can actually watch the data link error comes on to tell me I don't have connection anymore. Switch to the S4, and now I'm in the S4. I can actually fly this thing around. You'll notice the RCS works perfectly fine, uh, just like it is. It's also stabilized. So if I, like, jam on the controls really, really hard, um, I can actually reset the computer. Watch this. Reset. And you can see now that it is reset, um, it's not going to be trying to hold a specific heading. But I can actually now guide this thing around any which way that I want. So if I wanted to do, you know, a burn into like a TLI burn or something like that, I could actually take the time to go ahead and do that. Now, this is kind of the fun stuff. And I like to say these are kind of like the little polishy things that you have to kind of do after the fact. We we'll shut off auto mode there. Uh, we don't need to run auto mode. Uh, stabilizer mode works perfectly fine. I'm going to go ahead and uh, climb out, Ugh, do some EVA here. Oops, excuse me. And let's go wonder back here. Uh, let's see, we've got the S4. How's it all going? How's it all going? Whoop, I got to turn my little headlight on. I appreciate the fact the headlight works so well. Uh, so I'm just going to float in here. Uh, one of the things we did uh, when we were designing this is uh, trying to come up with like, do we just float over there and hit a switch? Uh, do we do it where we have to do like the chance position and docking and everything like that? And uh, for now, we actually keep it nice and simple. Now, the funny thing is, is you'll probably observe the fact that when I open this, the service module came with it. <laughs> 
Uh, one of the mistakes on my part there is uh, when we did engineer it, we designed it to attach to this side instead of both sides, so we didn't have like an issue. But it does create a rather hilarious situation, as you've just observed here. Because uh, now, of course, if I want to actually disengage that, I click, click, and now you can see these are now no longer docked. So now I can climb in here and switch over to the service module stage and actually go grab the lunar lander. Let's go ahead and grab this one real quickly here. I think uh, we've got to go to the CSM real quick. Yep, CSM, we're good to go. And I can just just like that. Look at this. Look at this. Now, look, if you let go, you can see it automatically stabilizes. Is this the goofiest thing you've ever seen at a game before? You have no idea how, how proud this is. Obviously, as you can probably tell. I'm going to go pitch it up a little bit. Of course, uh, what did I not do? I didn't program the translation controls. I forgot that version of the software, but that's okay. That's going to be plenty. Here we go. And what you would do here is you basically do a little flip and you connect to the top of the lunar module here. And again, I've just kind of kind of ran into it here. Whoa, <laughs> that's not great. And then we're ready, of course, we come over here and we have an LM release button, which sends a signal over to it to cancel. So let's go ahead and climb out of this thing and I'll go ahead and delete this real quick. And uh, let's go take a look, another look at the lamb and then I'll show you kind of how this all came together. Oh my goodness, look at it. Oh, it's, we're not, you know, it's really fun if you accidentally press a reset kind of thing. What do you mean it's low voltage? I did that correctly. Oh boy, delete this build again. You have to delete each piece individually. Oh no, the S4 is just tumbling away. They're not going to shoot it into the sun. Too bad. And there's my little uh, CSM here. Go ahead, delete that. Cool. All right, let's uh, let's see. Can I delete this? Yes, I can delete this. So one of the things I've learned in this game is when you do get to the moon, and again, I'm not going to spend 45 hours uh, going through the whole steps here, is you always want to place yourself something on the moon so you can come back to the moon when you want to come back, like I said. But um, but the fun thing here is the lunar lander is such, uh, you can see the Gus Mobile, like earlier versions and stuff like that. Let's grab the LMB base here uh it's gonna take five minutes for that thing to drop down to the ground here but that's okay and then of course we got the lm top as well and grab that uh 50, 50. oh my goodness <laughs> i'm not used to that gravity can you tell we got to find the side with the magenta line here i'm pretty sure it's going to be uh what side we got here turn my little headlight on i love the fact the headlight is uh, nice and strong and we're just going to go like that uh, uh. To success. And uh, then we have the uh, Lunar Lander here. And uh, like I said, we have driven all the way to the moon. It's a four hour experience. I'm not gonna sit there and do it, but it's it's great. And um, like I said, we were fiddling with it, trying to get some of the different stability controls all set up and uh, kind of doing those different components. So we did that. But um, the crazy thing here is it's just like, I, I just it's so much it's, it's so incredible when you really look at it like trying to get like the rcs to actually like behave when you're doing some of those components and then we would like run different programs like you know we had like program 100 and stuff like that and all those different crazy 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 things that we had built into it let me give take a look just a second and just like that you're on your way now the fun thing was when we first tried this uh, trying to get like the different components of it to work you got to imagine uh, ripping across the uh, lunar face here at very very high speeds and trying to realize that we just did not have the thrust to do it but uh, we made it work and uh, the thing that made it really really fun too was like trying to get like the instrumentation like as far as like the different displays and obviously we have to pitch forward to see where we're going so like if you want to switch over to landing mode like you're getting the lateral drift warning here and you can see it's uh, i can pitch it automatically it's got the same kind of stability controls you got to kind of do one of these things to kind of go kick oh don't we're, we're well we're landing one way or the other oh boy oh boy oh boy <laughs> we're here all right everybody jump on out and uh, of course you can see it was just fun and then we kind of floated out here like this and one set for man and all that other good stuff it was pretty exciting pretty exciting so uh, the last thing we're going to show you here is uh, we're going to show you kind of everything that went into actually putting this thing together and uh, that's kind of the fun part it's really the stage for uh, folks to kind of see all the silliness uh, that we put together for this one i got a, it was a mismatch by the way on the uh, actual communications frequency so the way this thing goes together, and uh, this is one of the things I think is such a gas uh, when people are watching this later on, for those of you who've hung along this long, is that it's each little buttons. So uh, when we first build it, of course, the, what you want to do is you want to find which way west is before you try to build it. Otherwise, it's going to give you issues. But you place this guy first, and um, it's massive, absolutely massive. You'll notice it has this little pink tail on it, and that tells you which way is up. Uh, it's really important. Uh, floating inside this, of course, so you can see there's there's no fuel in here. Uh, not yet. We don't have the pressurization update. But uh, Pacholi, if you're watching this, pretty pleased with the cherry on top, man. Can you please give us bigger motors so that we have a little more kick or maybe ones that give us like three times the chamber pressure or something like that? I just need more, man. And of course, we cheated with the fuel tank. And when I hit it, you can see that it is uh, it's a lot. It is it's enough. It's enough. It's uh, 2000 tons worth of fuel. So, of course, uh, that one was easy to build. Uh, we had to write special software for it for the purposes of uh, basically enabling us to uh, control it quickly and easily. 
Uh, and that was an interesting problem to have, to say the least. And then, of course, we learned early on that you need a giant tail. And you can see the tail there. And it lets me know which way is up. Because uh, when you spawn this whole thing upside down or you spawn at 90 degrees out of phase, you're going to cry. And uh, the other thing we had done originally is we had actually built a giant crane for this. And uh, again, S2, very, very easy stage. Very easy stage. Then the S4, this was a little bit harder of a stage to make. And again, you can see that uh, general alignment trying to come up with sort of a universal, acceptable method to sort of figure out a way to do these things, kind of a thing like that. That one went on real nice. Uh, the next phase, of course, is uh, rather amusing here. And again, you kind of got a preview of that when we're up in space and uh, we have a fairing. We have to go up here and basically open up the fairing. And uh, whoa, <laughs> was that an angle when that thing went up? That's okay though. And then of course, uh, we have to line up everything inside the fairing. So we grab our kind of LM base here like this. And uh, we just have to stick it in there. And uh, it makes it pretty easy to do. And again, just come here like this. I've done this a few times, so I kind of know how it goes. But again, I, I make mistakes. And trying to come up with a universal coupler, our first coupler only had one connection, and it was terrible. We actually gave up on the project because it was so bad. And then, of course, I'll grab our top here. So again, you can see kind of the way the cockpit sits there. And yes, the legs are sticking through. And you can stick that right there like that. So one of the things we can do is we can come in here again. Oh, we came up with ways to do buttons and do this through, like, the data and everything. And it was just crazy. So I'll go to landing legs, I'll do minus one, kind of fold those up like that. Yeah, it's going to create a new problem for us, but you'll see that in a minute. And then you come down here, of course, and now you press the code, and you have to come to the fairing again. You have to set this to zero. Whoa, you're going to get disoriented. Whoa, there we go. And of course, uh, then we have our lovely friend, the uh, service module goes next. And again, when we built the service module, we originally designed it where the coupler was at the end. You can see it's got that huge flag hanging out of it now. And uh, the downside to doing that, of course, was it was a very, very wobbly experience and we couldn't reliably stick it onto the ground. So you can see this ready to go. And then lastly, but not leastly, is our command module. And it's just, that's all there is to it. You just come to the top, you can orient it anyway, because it's going to straighten itself out. And that's it. That's how goofy of a project that we put together for this one. And uh, we're very proud of it. Like I said, it worked really, really well for us. Uh, one of the things you could do is you could do a data link test here, which is highly recommended. But you can go to like the next page. You can see we got fuel. Go to the next one. You can see it has fuel. Go to the CSM. Please don't push that one. And everything's good. The data link is good. If we had any errors, they'd come up. You can see our computers uh, sitting there at idle. Uh, then what you would do is you come down here like this, and, and quite amusingly, is you just sort of shut your jetpack off and sort of fly off the side like an idiot. You, yes, the landing leg is poking through the side, but hey, this wasn't perfection. I wanted to get good enough, and I'm very pleased with the end product. I've learned enough from this project to be able to do it again in about a quarter of the time. Let's go ahead and delete this leg here. Again, we have to delete all the uh, different components and stuff that are required for basically stabilizing these things on the ground. And we go all the way down here to the ground. Oh, we go ahead and delete this one as well. And that's it. Our rocket is ready for launch, man. Now, I should be jealous if you could throw together a rocket that fast. Whew, look at that thing. So then what you would do is you'd float up to the tippy top here. And uh, you'd experience this thing called gimbal lock. And you'd cry. <laughs> Oh boy, that was a pain in the butt the first time I found that out the hard way. So we climb inside like this, and uh, all you do is you go verb 37. Of course, real pros would know that it's uh, program one here, which would get everything done, but we actually chose program 11. Enter, and it's ready. So the computer is flashing away there, telling us it's basically waiting to uh, receive the launch command. What I did is I built a fly-by-wire stabilizing system that you basically use for the first part of the flight, and then you basically switch over. Ready for how unscientific this is? Watch this, watch this. Oh, that's it. Off we go. <laughs> See what I mean? It's not very scientific, but um, I love it. I love it. I absolutely am so proud of this project, like I said. And you have all the files at your disposal. So one of the things you got to do is you got to pitch over a little bit, and you can see the uh, stabilization software does a really nice job there, kind of balancing this out real nicely. And we're a little off course, but that's okay. And uh, one of the things you want to do is you really want to... So you can see my cue flying up there. That's how basically your air pressure. Now you want to give it just a moment to kind of get us a little bit of altitude before we start going crazy here. And then when I'm satisfied, like I am right now, I actually go over here and I press auto. And what auto will do is it will attempt to maintain a flight path. Uh, you've already seen the auto flight here, so you know exactly how this works. And that is my Saturn V project. And uh, hopefully, like I said, everything is provided for you so you can take a look at it. There's nothing perfect about this in the slightest. I'm not going to pretend like uh, this is, you know, some you know, God's gift, you know, space flight or something like that. Oh, let's go ahead and be careful of that gimbal lock there. I'm just going to give it a nice little push. And again, like I said, if it starts to get a little twitchy on you, you can always kind of kick in. The gimbal lock, by the way, is on account of the fact that it is uh, very difficult to do that math. I'll go ahead and release it. There we go. Again, you always have to pay attention as a pilot, like anything. And now we're on our way. In about uh, 14 minutes and 30 seconds or something like that, we should be back up to altitude and pretty good to go. Um, I didn't design any board stages or anything like that. I had thought of it and we had planned it. But again, we just wanted to see if we could do it. And we could. Enjoy. <laughs> 